Hey everyone, TPS Miner here. Welcome back to the TPS Miner channel. So if you're currently using Hive OS, I think it's probably a safe bet to assume that over the last few weeks, you have more than likely experienced some sort of an issue or frustration using Hive. So what I'd like to do today is introduce you to an alternative called Rave OS. So Rave OS is another Linux-based operating system and one that I've personally been testing quite a bit over the last several months. So what I'd like to do today is I'm gonna walk through the pricing, walk you through an installation, and then use one of my own workers to show you some of the basic features and functions of Rave OS. So before we go any further, I do wanna point out that there is a referral program. I am gonna be putting a description down below uh, for Rave OS, and that link is going to be a referral program link. So if you choose to use it, that'd be awesome. Uh, if you don't, that's fine too, but I just wanted to make sure, full disclosure, you are aware it is going to be a referral program link. So let's jump into the pricing. And this is one of the more attractive things with Rave OS right now, is if you are using a twominers.com pool, it is completely free for an unlimited number of workers. So if you're mining on Ethereum on two miners to get your payouts in Bitcoin, and you've got more than two workers, you're paying $3 per month. If you were to be doing the same thing in Rave OS, then all of those workers would be free. For me, this is also beneficial because I am starting to migrate some of my workers over to Ergo, and I am moving them over to two miners uh, for two reasons. One, to take advantage of the, the free option. And two, I wanna help distribute the hash rate. And two miners right now, I believe is the third largest ergo mining pool. So, you know, as opposed to contributing to that largest mining pool, I want to contribute my hash rate to one of the smaller mining pools. So this is all a win-win for me. So again, as I mentioned, your first worker is going to be free. If you've got two, between two and 100 workers, you're paying $2 a month per worker, as opposed to $3 on Hive. And then if you've uh, got more than 100 workers, uh, you're at enterprise level, and you're probably not watching this video anyway. Okay, so the next thing, let's jump over to the installation. So a couple of quick things, minimum system requirements. These are very easily attainable with pretty much any hardware setup you might have for your at-home miners. Uh, let's take a look at list of supported hardware. Again, this is all of your standard uh, graphics cards that you would expect to be supported in HiveOS are also supported in RaveOS. So, to start your account, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is create an account on Rave OS. So I'm not gonna walk through this. I already have one created. Click on this link, go ahead and create your account and then rejoin us here uh, for the first step, which is going to be to download the image. So this says download and unpack. For now, just go ahead and download it and then we'll move on to the next step. So the next step, you're gonna log into the account that you had just created. And then these next few steps are all gonna kind of lump together. You're gonna log in, add a new worker on the dashboard or in the workers menu, go to the system info tab of the added worker and copy the workers token. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is my Rave OS, I'm already logged in. So we're just gonna click um, add worker and we'll just call this one test, test. Uh, we'll just give it some random password and specify the number of cards. We're just gonna say one card for now, and we'll save this. And if we go back over to the dashboard, you see now that we've got a new worker called test. So let's click on test and go to the system info tab. And you'll see that there is something here now called a worker token. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that token. And let's go back to the instructions. So we've copied the worker token. The next thing is saying download the HDD raw copy tool flashing utility. I personally like to use Belania Etcher. So I will be skipping this step and moving on to step six to flash the image. I'm gonna be using Belania Etcher. So let's go ahead and open up Belania Etcher and we'll flash from a file and you can see that we've got this file that we downloaded. I apologize, this is probably very small to see because of the resolution on my screen, but I'm just gonna select the image file that I had downloaded, select the target, 
And I'm just gonna select a USB drive that I have installed on my system. And then I'm going to flash. Now I'm not gonna do it because I've already done it to save some time. So let's go ahead and open up the folder and see what this looks like once we have done the flash. So there's a folder here called config. So we're gonna open up config and there's a text file here called token. So we're gonna open up this text file and you can see it's blank. And all I'm gonna do is paste in the worker token that I had copied from the worker that we had added. And we'll just go ahead and save that. And that's it, we're done. So now you'll eject the media. So you'll eject the USB drive. You'll insert that into your rig, boot your rig up, and that worker will then show up in your Rave OS. So once your worker's here, I'm gonna delete this one just to get it out of the way. So once your worker is added, you can come over here to dashboard and you'll see a list of all of the workers you have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the, the, uh, the link for the, the worker. I've called this one Emperor. And what this is, this is my rig of six RX 470 four gigabyte graphics cards that coincidentally I just purchased uh, a few days ago. So I have these now set up in Rave OS mining Ergo. So once you're in here, you get all the basic same information. You get the information that the name of the card, MSI RX 470, four gigabyte, Samsung memory, GDDR5. Again, all the basic things you would expect you see your overclock settings, your core clock, your memory clock, and your, uh, your core voltage. And then over here, we see the hash rate, the number of accepted, rejected, and invalid shares, your temperatures, and these are color coded, and you can change the color coding of the, the temperatures in your settings, uh, your fan speeds, power consumption, and then there is a BIOS option here for each of the individual cards. And if you click on those buttons, you can download, upload, and force upload. And I did in fact use the force upload feature to do the BIOS modding for my RX 470s. So again, very handy, very useful, all of the same features and functions that you would expect to see similar to in Hive OS, just looking a little bit different. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to get started in with mining. So basically your wallet is going to be a combination of your wallet and your flight sheet all together in one uh, compared to what you would do in Hive OS. So let's go ahead and add an, a wallet just to show you what this is gonna look like. And I'm just gonna call this Ergo Test. So we'll add that wallet. And once you uh, add it, you get to select the coin. So we're gonna select the coin of Ergo the coin name Ergo. Then we can select a pool. So in this case, you see the first two pools listed are the two miners pools, and they are highlighted as free. If you choose any of the other pools, then of course you will have to pay for those workers. So we're gonna go ahead and set it up as a two miners pool. So now you've got your URLs to select from for your mining pool location and port. So for me, I would select the US location and then I would paste in my wallet. So I'm just gonna type in here, ergo wallet. Um, you know, again, you would put your wallet uh, information here. So whatever. Uh, then you would select your miner. So in this case, you could see all of the most recent miner versions are here. So this is absolutely kept up. It is um, up to date with all of the latest miner revisions. And so let's just scroll down. I'm gonna pick T-Rex 26.4. And if I needed to add any additional parameters, you can see we have the ability to edit the miner. So this is where I would put any additional command line arguments. So for what I'm doing, I don't need to add any of them, but you do have the ability or option to do so. So then once you save this, now you've got a full wallet and minor combo set up similar to a flight sheet that you can apply to one of your workers. 
Okay, so let's go back to the dashboard and let's take a look at this worker again. And you can see that I am currently mining with a, uh, a wallet that I had set up called Ergo Nautilus using Ergo Coin. The miner I'm using because these are AMD cards is Team Red Miner. And it's just been chugging along the algorithms out of Lycos 2. And this has been chugging along for about 10 hours roughly. So the next tab here, let's walk through these tabs. So tuning, this is where you would set your overclocks. This to me is one of the greatest features of Rave OS. Uh, and I will say this is not a sponsored video. This is just me speaking personally uh, about my experience with Rave OS. I really, really like it. Um, but you can see here, so for each of the cards in this worker or in this rig, I can set my core clock, memory clock, core voltage, memory controller voltage, uh, power limit I'm not using, fan speed, and if you are doing auto, you can set a target temperature. Once these are all set, so you could go through and set the first card because these are all the same. I could set one individually and then just hit copy device. And what this would do is it would auto fill all of the other workers to match those overclocks. Now you can see I do have one of my cards overclocked differently and I've done that because I am having terrible issues controlling the temperature on this card. So I filled out the first row, I copied device, it filled out all of the others. Then I went back and edited this one specifically and then hit save and apply. And then it applies that to your worker and sets off and starts mining. Now, this is where I love the overclock capability in Rave OS. You can set overclocks on a per algorithm basis. So for Ergo, I have an Auto Lycos 2 overclock template built. If I decided I wanted to switch this rig over to mine Ethereum Classic, I can click on my Ethereum Classic overclocks, save and apply, and it will apply my Ethereum Classic overclocks to all of my cards. So easy, so simple, and so beautiful. This is such an elegant solution, and I absolutely love it. Okay, so that is how we manage overclocks. The next thing, we can go into settings. This is where we can set watchdogs. So you can set a temperature watchdog, you can set a minimum hash rate watchdog, and you can set your auto fans, you can do auto reboots. So this is where you, essentially you would do controls um, that again, are all exist in Hive OS and they also exist in Rave OS. Okay, the next thing, system info. We've talked about this a little bit. This is where we got our worker token. This gives you the information about the kernel version, software version of Rave OS that you are using. And also gives you some information about the, um, the worker that you're currently using. You can add tags here to the worker if you'd like. I don't have any tags set up currently, but uh, again, if uh, tags are something you're interested in, you have the ability to do tags in Rave OS. The next thing, statistics. So this gives you all of the information you'd want. Um, you know, this is your GPU count, your hash rate, your fan speeds, power, load average. So just at a glance, uh, take a look at the statistics of the worker. And then for notifications, this is just a list of any notifications that may pop up from the worker. Okay, so let's continue working over here on mining. So we are currently mining. So we've got options for actions here. We can pop open a console. So this is similar to your Hive shell. You can look at worker logs. You can start, pause, reboot, or shut down the worker. Okay, so let's now walk down on the left here. So we talked about the wallets. That's essentially how you set up your over, or you set up your, the equivalent of your flight sheet. You can set up overclocking profiles. I don't have any profiles set up, uh, something I wanna tinker with a little bit, but I haven't done anything with yet. Custom mining. This is something that will be very important or valuable if you are spec mining a new coin. So you can come in here, you can add a new coin, give it whatever name you want. So, you know, spec coin and whatever, you know, test. And then you would select the algorithm that's used to mine that spec coin. 
and you would save this and now you would have a setup that you could use to mine custom mining for something that doesn't already exist in Rave OS. Uh, same thing with pools, you can add custom pools and you can add custom miners. Next, finance. So if you are um, in a position where you are having to pay for workers, you can come over here, you can add credit. And I'm gonna show you the different options here. So this just shows a recommended $5 payment to get started. So if we choose and continue, you can see you can pay directly from your crypto.com account. You can use coin payments direct, coin payments, or uh, Visa, MasterCard, uh, or credit card uh, via Stripe. So I do want to highlight if you do use a credit card, they will charge you a 2.9% um, fee plus an additional 30 cent fee. So a $5 credit would actually cost you $5.46. <coughs> okay, the next thing, I love this, pool stats. So if you don't want to go in and look at your cards at the pool, you can simply come over here and select what coin, and you have to have these set up in advance. So because we've set up Ergo, you can see I can come in and I can look at my current hash rate, my average hash rate, my online workers, uh, last 24 hour reward, and I can look at the hash rate plot as it's being seen at the pool. So again, this is just a quick, easy reference to be able to check out how you're doing at the pool side without having to go to look at the pool. Okay, history, this just gives you a history of all of the actions that you've done. And report is something similar, but what this allows you to do is it allows you to look at your power consumption. So let's go back and start from yesterday and we'll jump ahead for tomorrow. I'm going to put in 11 cents per kilowatt hour. And what this does is it tells me the power consumption. Now keep in mind, this is power consumption according to the software, not your power consumption at the wall. And particularly with AMD cards, you have the same problem as what you'd see in HiveOS. The uh, power consumption as reported in software is not accurate. But it does allow you to get an estimate of what your energy costs are. So this is saying I've used 4.46 kilowatt hours and at 11 cents per kilowatt hour, that would tell me that I'm, uh, it would have cost me 49 cents to be running this rig. Okay, so we'll go back up to clusters. Uh, and again, this is just basically where you would be able to look at uh, individual clusters or this would be the equivalent of farms in HiveOS. And then your dashboard allows you to look at each one of your individual workers. So again, um, you know, again, yeah, you can see this card 77 degrees. Uh, what's happening here with Ergo, it transitions between mining and building the next data set. When it's building the next data set, the power consumption jumps up and I see uh, these temperatures going through the roof. So I definitely need to do something about this, but in the short term, uh, we're just dealing with the fact that I've got some pretty high temperatures. Uh, so again, uh, Rave OS is in many ways, um, in my opinion, an equal competitor with Hive OS. Now, Hive OS does have the integration of OctaMiners, whereas Rave OS does not. So if you are an OctaMiner user, you are certainly going to lose out on some of the functionality that you've got in Hive OS. But a majority of us out there, we're not using OctaMiners. And so you don't really lose any of that functionality. Uh, and again, in my opinion, you've got a lot of benefits here to Rave, using Rave OS. Uh, one of them is cost, certainly, particularly if you're mining to two miners. So uh, I just wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you learned something today, or if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the notification bell to be notified of future content. And if you're interested in learning more about Rave OS, let me know in the comments below if there's any features or functions you'd like for me to demonstrate. I'd be happy to do that. Um, and again, appreciate you taking the time. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and I look forward to seeing you again real soon.